two for the clarity and closure of the viewers comments in these videos I will take a look at some of the comments that you the viewer have shared with me some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel some of them may not be depending upon their content I use this as an opportunity to answer questions address criticisms and acknowledge criticisms of course and also to kind of direct the conversation keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended meaning it is a grammar channel this is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar the wonderful technology brought to the public by colon David Ivan colon Miller and so that's the main purpose of this channel so if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field also this is definitely a learning place a place for learning where I try to teach not only the grammar but also the psychology of the grammar one other thing I don't ever take anything personal it's never personal although it may seem like it is at times it's not it's not at all and I highly recommend everyone out there commenting follow the same protocol don't take anything personal that I say what you put in is what you get out the energy that you bring here I will most likely either give back to you maybe a little bit or maybe a thousandfold it just depends upon how you approach me this is my vessel there are terms and conditions if you comply with them everything's peachy if you don't well you get what you get and you don't throw a fit without further ado let's get to the comments first comment comes from colon Nigel and he says for the correctness of the sentences with the CFN words of the thought with the facts by the author let's check it is that correct sentence structure or is it not correct sentence structure for the author of the facts is with the thought of the seven words with the sentence by the correctness period now sequentially going by the positionals this is a 100 percent correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar performance well done Nigel I do have some questions about what it's conveying and for example what he means by correctness what is this correct sentence structure finite mean of correctness because if you don't have closure on your facts then you probably shouldn't be making claims you have to have closure on your facts and be able to give convey that closure to another individual so I would have questions as to what he means by correctness what he means by self and words and what he means by thought uh, because in the fiction of course thought is past tense however that's not always the case in correct sentence structure it just depends upon the author and what their volition is and what their correct sentence structure finite mean of that word thought is um, and also a nice nod to the uh, numbers videos that I did a, a couple years back where I was on the fence with the word seven s-e-v-e-n where I was researching the the prefix se in front of a consonant and so I started using s-e-o-f-e-n for the number seven when I had to write it out which I don't do anymore but I mean there's nothing wrong with it and if he if Nigel has claimed the word s-e-o-f-e-n as seven which I think that's what he's conveying here well then he is the author of his contracts in the authority and seven is seven thanks for the comment another comment from Nigel he says for the correct and correctness of the finite mean is with the lack of the void claim with the correct sentence communication parsing syntax grammar by the claimant period now I have to think that Nigel meant correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar uh, that he just by little mistake left out um, structure when you read this backwards is for the claimant of the correct sentence structure is with the void claim meaning they have no claim 
of the lack. So he's saying he has a void claim of the lack. How do you have a void claim of the lack? I don't understand. I've seen things like this come out of the Russell J. Gould uh, contingent, the Red Thumb Club contingent, the Syntex Learning Center contingent. Well, they say they have a void claim of the lack. So what Nigel is basically saying here is he has a void claim of the lack of the finite mean. So he's saying he does have a finite mean of the correct and correctness, which is not what I think he's trying to convey. I think he's trying to convey that he doesn't have a finite mean of the correct and correctness. Because I did ask him, Nigel, what is your, finite, your correct sentence structure finite mean for correct or correctness? And I think that's what he's trying to convey with the honor and the grace. So the way you could fix that is just say, for example, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the void claim of the finite mean with the term of the correctness with this statement by this claimant period or something like that. You could do that. You're making a void claim of a finite mean. You don't have a finite mean for the word correctness. That's basically what I just said. And again, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you like what I just did there, where I can create a correct sentence structure on the spot verbally and be correct with it, there are, over, there are over 400 videos, almost 500 videos on this YouTube channel that you can study. And also, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a correct grammar workshop. And then you, too, may be able to create correct sentence structures exactly like I do and teach it to other people. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to be able to promulgate this technology all over the earth and get people excited about it? Because that's the kind of, that's the level of knowledge and skill that you must have to be successful with using this in the real world. Thanks for the comment, Nigel. Oh, and another one from Nigel where he does correct uh, the mistake that I said, where I said correct sentence structure. He left the word uh, structure out. I think it was, but he, he corrected it here. So well done on the stop and correct, Nigel. Next comment comes from Charlie Richardson. Can't barely hear volumes full blast. So if I become the fact using CSSC PSG with honor, the fiction will vacate their <laughs> position, as in part like the Red Sea or step around them. So we have a little run on sentence there. I suppose Charlie is telling me that the volume of the live stream is too low. I did check that, by the way, and I had no problem with the volume, and I didn't have anybody else say there was a problem with the volume. So, Charlie, I would recommend checking your listening equipment to see if there's some sort of uh, faulty uh, scenario going on there. So if you become a fact, I suppose he means with the live life claim, you must have a balance of honor and grace, Charlie, not just honor, a balance of honor and grace. The fiction will vacate their position. Theoretically, yes, that's the way it works if you have closure on the grammar. If you have closure on the grammar, if you have closure and are the authority of the grammar that you are using and you use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, yes, the fiction will vacate their position. As in part like the Red Sea or step around them. I don't know what the last part means, step around them. Um... Uh, I don't know if Charlie's talking about him stepping around them or, or what. But uh, short answer is yes. If you tick all those boxes that I just mentioned. You have to have closure in the grammar and you have to have such closure and skill in conveying it that you can teach it to another individual on the spot. Another comment from Charlie Richardson and he says, Is has tangible and is has a possessive third person possessive same as with in correct sentence structure. Uh, Charlie, I highly recommend uh, taking and investing your now space in studying the almost 500 videos on my YouTube channel. You will be able to answer your question very quickly um, if you check out my videos on the verbs, is and are in correct sentence structure. If you check out my parse playlist or look at the mini classes, on correct sentence structure or parse um, because it appears as though you obviously haven't. Or you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. We can set up a workshop and you can really fast track your learning just like walking into a classroom. 
with a set curriculum? Short answer, is is tangible. Yes, is is tangible. And is has a possessive, third person possessive. That has nothing to do with the correct sentence structure. There is only one way to convey uh, possessorship in correct sentence structure uh, as far as the facts go, and that is using an apostrophe. Um, as far as positional sequencing, uh, possession is conveyed with the positional with, which is congruent with of. Remember, in correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. Thanks for your comment. Next comment comes from L2, and they say, why is demon not a fact here? And what they're doing is they're commenting on the syntax mini lesson that I did where I was syntaxing a adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble sentence. So I responded, there are no facts in that sentence. From your question, my guess is that you are a beginner with zero to tone, no knowledge of correct sentence structure. If you'd like to learn it, you're in the right place. Keep watching. <laughs> so, I mean, that is true. This may be L2's first video. Um, so you have to know what a fact is. You have to have closure on what a fact is, and you have to have closure on correct sentence structure. And if L2 had all those things in place, then they probably wouldn't have asked, uh, asked that question. So thanks for your comment, L2, and I'm glad you're here. Another comment from L2. And they say, do you use the word nativity as synonym to beginning because ing equals no? And the answer to that is that that's part of it. But the real reason is because be is a particle of negation. It means no. ing is also a particle of negation, but you could just cut that off and use begin. But be is a particle of negation in this context, and so therefore... Um, I don't use that as a fact in correct sentence structure. I use the word nativity or source or something similar to that. I also would not use the word original because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, which is also a particle of negation. Next question comes from Quayland James. For the complete beginner to this channel, where would you suggest I begin? It's not clear to me where I should begin and start from. Thank you. Well, Quaylen James, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and set up a correct grammar, uh, apply for a correct grammar workshop, and I will take you by the hand from the beginning to the end, if that's what you're motivated to do. Just like uh, walking into a classroom, I have a set curriculum if you would like me as your guide. If not, there are almost 500 videos on this YouTube channel. Jump in anywhere. It's up to you to invest the time and energy in... Uh, you know, studying this stuff, I've already taken the time and invested thousands upon thousands of hours in making these videos and publishing these videos over the last five years. Uh, so I've done my part. It's my gift to you. It's up to you what you do with it. Now, I will say that you are in the right place because you're looking at the mini classes. So I would recommend starting with the mini class playlist, which is what you're looking at right now. Also, the parts of speech playlist. And then move on into the the three the three main playlists: the uh, correct sentence structure playlist, the parse playlist, and the syntax playlist. Thanks for the comment. And the final comes from uh, comment comes from Nikki Mouse. Thank you for the education that you bring forth, so that we can understand and learn. You are appreciated. Hi, I am a follower of your YouTube. I was watching a video of yours, and you have background music playing. I want to just point out that it was a little loud and I wanted you wanted to concentrate on exactly what you were saying. Well, thank you for the uh, kind words and also for the critique. I am aware of this uh, happens sometimes, unfortunately, uh, but luckily the music does not play the entire way through most videos, just at the beginning and at the end. And uh, But I'll definitely uh, try and be more mindful of that. Thanks for pointing that out. And thanks for coming to the channel and viewing. And again, if you want to learn the grammar, hit me up at the email address uh, listed at the bottom of your screen, and we'll set up a consultation. Thank you once again for watching this comments video. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your viewership. If you're interested in supporting this channel and becoming a member, go ahead and hit the join button at the bottom of your at the bottom of this video, and check out the two tiers, uh, particularly the second tier 
offers exclusive content not available to the public if you so choose. Also, you can talk, as I said before, you can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen to apply for a correct grammar workshop. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, I have been teaching it for five years. I have over, geez, well over 20,000 hours uh, of performance with this grammar. Uh, hundreds of students. Um, so, if you're interested in that, that option is available. Or, of course, you can just indulge in the almost 500 videos on the channel. As far as I know, there is no other channel on YouTube or on Earth like this one that has this much correct sentence structure quantum grammar knowledge on it. If there is, please leave the link to it in the comments section because I would love to check it out. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.